Hello, my name is Scott Vandehei and I'm a front-end developer here at Cloud4. Today I'd like to talk to you about squashing your pull requests. As a general rule, when merging a pull request from a feature branch with a messy commit history, you should squash your commits. There are exceptions, but for the most part, squashing results in a cleaner git history that's easier for the team to read. For context, our team uses a version of git flow which means team members do most of their work in a feature branch. Feature branches are short-lived, and there's only one developer committing to them. When the work is ready for review, they make a pull request back to the main branch. Once it's been approved, it gets merged, and the feature branch is deleted. The advice I give in this video may be less relevant if you don't use feature branches like this. Long-lived feature branches with many developers committing or branching again from the feature branch, it's going to complicate matters. As usual, there's no one right answer for how to use Git. The best workflow is the one that works for your team. To demonstrate this recommendation more clearly, I've created a simple Git repo with a few commits on the main branch already. And from there, I submitted a pull request from a feature branch with multiple commits. As you can see, it's a bit of a mess. In my experience, most pull requests look like this by the time they've been approved. There's often a handful of incremental commits reflecting the original work the developer did, then come a few minor commits fixing typos or lint errors. There may be some commits addressing code review feedback. <laughs> there might even be a revert of some code that needed to be removed from the pull request, and even sometimes a revert of the revert. <laughs> By the time it gets approved, your pull request has probably become a mess of dozens of commits with unhelpful commit messages like oops or sigh or lint fix. Now, you've got three options for how to merge your pull request. You can make a merge commit, you can rebase and merge, or you can squash and merge. All three are useful in different circumstances. Let's review merge commit first. Making a merge commit is the default option in GitHub. When you choose this option, your commit history will be retained exactly. Your commits will be interwoven with any other commits made on the parent branch. For example, this commit here was not part of our original of our PR. It was added to the main branch after we created the feature branch. This is called a merge commit because an extra commit will be added at the very end with a message like merge pull request from feature branch. Note that all of your messy incremental commits are still there. And even if your branch only contained a single commit, there would still be a merge commit added. Making a merge commit is useful for situations where you want the history to reflect that two branches were merged. That doesn't happen as often as you might think. In our team, the one example where we do this is when we make a release branch. Multiple developers will make commits to the release branch over time. Once the release is done, we'll merge the release branch back into the primary development branch using a merge commit. In that case, merged release 13 as a commit is useful history. However, in the use case we're mostly solving for, a developer merging a short-lived feature branch with no dependencies, that history is pointlessly noisy. All those fixed typo commit messages don't add anything to the history or to your team's understanding of how this feature was added. So let's look at our next option, rebase and merge. Rebasing your pull request is a clever Git trick that lets you say, hey, I know I started this feature branch last week, but in the meantime, other people have made changes and I don't want to deal with their changes coming after mine and maybe causing conflicts. So could you pretend that I made my feature branch today? The trick here is that each Git commit not only contains a set of changes to files, but also a link to the parent commit, the commit those changes should be applied to. Because each commit has a parent, Git can always follow the chain of history. When you make a branch from main, 
the parent of your branch is the current commit on main. Then development continues on both your branch and on main. When you merge your branch, the merge commit is a special commit that has two parents, the last commit from your feature branch and the newest commit on main, which closes the branch. When you rebase your branch, what you're doing is changing the parent commit on your branch. You're changing the parent commit your branch was based on to be the most recent commit on main. Then when you merge your feature branch, it sees that all of your commits come after what's on main. So it just adds them to the chain with no need for a merge commit. You can see the results here. All the commits from the feature branch now happen after the commit that was created on main during feature branch development. Even though that commit came later, we've rewritten the history just a little bit to make it easier to read by telling Git to pretend that all the commits in our feature branch happened at the time it was merged. Note that there's no merge commit, but as with the merge commit option, all your messy incremental commits are retained. It's just that instead of being scattered through history, they'll all come in a batch at the end. So for our purposes, both the rebase and merge commit option, both the rebase and the merge commit options leave a messy git history with no real benefit. So let's look at our third option, squash and merge, and see how it helps. Squash is an option in Git to collapse all the incremental commits in your pull request into a single commit. If you use the GitHub interface, it will squash all your commits into one, and then it will give you the option to edit the commit message. It'll even pre-populate your new message with all the messages of the commits being squashed. And then you can do something like add a list of all the incremental changes if you want to preserve it. If you use the command line, you have the option of only squashing some of the commits, or even changing the order they're applied in. It's a nice option, but I'll admit I rarely find myself needing to do anything more than simply combining all of my commits into one. For our purposes, a developer merging a short-lived feature branch that no one else is depending on, squashing all the commits like this is ideal. It gives us a nice, clean commit history with a single commit representing all the work that happened on the feature branch. There are no annoying merge commits. There's no pointless incremental lint fix commits, just one commit with a useful commit message. Squashing and merging is not the right answer for every situation. In particular, if you need a record of one branch being merged into another, or if you have long lived feature branches that other people depend on, your team may prefer merge commits as a more accurate record of history. However, for developers working alone on short-lived feature branches that will be deleted after merging, squashing is ideal. It results in a cleaner Git history that's easier for the team to read. There's a quote in the Git documentation that really gets to the heart of this. One point of view on this is that your repository's commit history is a record of what actually happened. It's a historical document, valuable in its own right, and should not be tampered with. From this angle, changing the commit history is almost blasphemous. You're lying about what actually transpired. So what if there was a messy series of merge commits? That's how it happened, and the repository should preserve that for posterity. Now, the opposing point of view is that the commit history is the story of how your project was made. You wouldn't publish the first draft of a book, and the manual for how to maintain your software deserves careful editing. This is the camp that uses tools like Rebase and Filter Branch to tell the story in a way that's best for future readers. I think it's clear I subscribe to the second point of view. <laughs> The point of the commit history on a project is to help devs in the future who are looking back to when a particular feature was added. They, they don't care that you fixed a typo or had to address a lint error. They just want to know the context around when and why your feature was added. In conclusion, as a rule of thumb, I feel strongly that most commits should, most pull requests should squash down to a single commit 
with a well-written message explaining why a change is being made. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next time.